Hello everyone and welcome back to the multiplayer FPS tutorial series. It's been a long time so let's get right into it. This is part 2 of implementing the scoreboard and today we'll be adding kill and death tracking as well as showing and hiding the scoreboard when you press the tab key. So first I want to clean up this RPC in our player controller class. I'm going to replace this string with a name of and then an open parenthesis and then a close parenthesis at the end. And this will just ensure that we can't misspell the name of the method because a common error people run into is they'll spell the name of the method wrong and then Photon won't call the RPC. We're also going to replace RPC target.all with pv.owner because we only need to deal damage to the owner of this player controller. We don't have to send the damage RPC to every single player if we're just going to ignore it. And we can also remove the if not pv.isMine return because we'll only be sending it to the owner of this player controller. That just cuts down on some unnecessary RPC calls. Alright, with those minor fixes out of the way, let's implement kill tracking. The first thing we need to do is implement a system for players to find the player managers of other players. We need this so that when a player kills us, we can tell their player manager that they got a kill. So let's go into the player manager class and add a new public static player manager. So we're going to return a player manager from this method. We'll name this method find and take a parameter of type player. At the top we'll have to add using photon.realtime and then we'll name this parameter player. We'll also add using system.link at the top because we'll use it to narrow down our search results in a minute. We'll return a find objects of type. Type will be player manager. And this will give us an array of every player manager in the scene. And then we'll take a single or default with the condition being that the player manager's photon views owner is the same as the player that we're trying to find. This isn't the most efficient method of finding the player manager related to a player because it searches through every single player manager in the scene, but it'll work for now. We'll add a new method called public void get kill. Then if we go over to our player controller scripts, we'll add a new parameter to our RPC function called photon message info info. This is a parameter that photon will automatically fill out and we can use it to find our player manager. So we'll say player manager .find, and then we'll pass in info.sender, which will find the player manager associated with the person who sent this RPC. Then we'll call .get kill on their player manager. So where we're at now is when a player gets killed, it'll find the player manager of the player who killed them, and it'll call get kill on it. But this is still all happening on the player who got killed's client. So we need a way to send this to the client of the person who actually killed us. It's a little confusing, but you'll see in a second. Let's add a new pun RPC and we'll call it void RPC underscore get kill. At the top let's add a new int kills to keep track of how many kills we have and in the RPC we'll say kills plus plus to increment our kills by one. At the top we'll also say using hash table equals exit games dot client dot photon dot hash table which will tell C sharp that the hash table class we're going to be using is not the default C sharp hash table class but photons custom one. So to sync the number of kills we have, we're going to use custom properties, which we've used before for the item index on the player controller. We'll say hash table hash equals new hash table. Then we'll say hash dot add kills and we'll pass in our kills variable. Then we'll say photon network dot local player dot set custom properties and we'll pass in the hash we just created. In the get kill function, we'll add pv dot rpc name of rpc underscore get kill and then we'll send it to the pv.owner. Now we have to actually make the kills display on the leaderboard. So let's go into our scoreboard item class. We'll make it inherit from mono behavior pun callbacks so we can get notified when a custom property is updated. We have to add using photon.pun to have access to this class. We'll add a public override void on player properties update and we'll say using hash table equals exit games .client .photon .hash table again. And then this can just be written as hash table instead of that long thing. In here we can delete the base call because it's not required for mono behavior pun callbacks. At the top we'll add a player player and inside of our initialize function we'll say this dot player equals player so that we can access the player from inside this function. Inside the function we'll say if target player equals equals our player. So if this scoreboard item is related to the player that had their properties update. Then we'll check if changed props contains key kills. So if the property being updated is the kills property, 
and then it will make a new function here called update stats. Then we'll call it in our if statement down here. We're making update stats a function instead of just calling it in the if statement because we're also going to call it in the initialize method when the player first joins the room. To account for this, we can't guarantee that the kills value will always be a custom property. It might not have been incremented yet. So we'll say if player .custom properties .try get value of kills, and then we'll say out object kills. Kills text .text equals kills .to string. So we'll get the property if it exists out of the player's custom properties, then we'll make it into a string and display it on our kills text. If the kills property hasn't been set yet, we just won't do anything. In our initialize function, let's add a call to update stats. This ensures that if we join a room late, the scoreboard will say the right amount of kills for each player. Alright, now it's ready to test. I'm going to join the same room with the editor and with a build, and we'll see how it works. Alright, and we're in. I'm going to shoot the editor, and as you can see on the scoreboard, the kills for Rugbug increased. Rugbug is the build, so it works. But there's also an error in the console, so let's check that out. The error is being called here in our player controller script in the onplayer properties update function. To fix it, we just have to add a condition to the if statement, if changed props contains key item index and the rest of the things. The error is occurring because when you change one custom property in Photon, it calls every single mono behavior pun callbacks on player property update. So when we get a kill and change the custom property for kills, it's also calling the player controller's on player properties update, and the player controller expects that to be the item index. So to fix it, we just have to make sure that in the player controller, we're checking to see if the item index is the property being updated. Because it might not be, it could be the kills. And if the kills update, it has no relation to the item index, so we can just ignore it. Alright, now that kills are done, we can start tracking deaths as well. It should be a lot easier because we've already made everything for kills work. Let's add a new int deaths at the top of our player manager to track the number of deaths we have. Then in our dime method, let's copy everything from our RPC get kill and paste it in. Let's replace kills with deaths for the variable and the string. Back in our scoreboard item, let's copy this section and update stats and paste it again. We'll replace kills with deaths for the string, for the text, and for the out object deaths. And then in our on player properties update, we'll have to add an extra condition to our if statement, an or, and then if changed props dot contains key deaths. So if the changed props contains deaths or kills, then we'll update the stats. And that's all that's required for deaths. It's a lot easier because deaths can be tracked on the local client instead of having to have other players tell us when we get a kill. So we'll create a room and start it, and then if we jump off the platform, you can see that our deaths increase when we die. And this should sync up for other players as well. The last thing we have to do is make the scoreboard show and hide when we press the tab key. So let's go under our scoreboard canvas and on our scoreboard object under it, and we'll add a new canvas group component to our scoreboard. Disable interactable and blocks raycast because we don't need it, and we'll use this alpha value to show and hide our scoreboard. Let's set it to zero so it's hidden by default. Inside the scoreboard script, let's make a new serialized field, canvas group, and we'll just call it canvas group. Then let's add a void update and say if input.get key down, keycode.tab. Then the canvas group.alpha will be one, else if input.get key up keycode.tab then canvas group.alpha will be zero. So if we press tab down, show the scoreboard, and if we lift tab up, hide the scoreboard. All we have to do now is assign the canvas group to the scoreboard script, and if we run it, it should work. Alright, it works perfectly. And that's the end of this episode of the multiplayer FPS tutorial series. If you wondered why it's been so long since I made the last one, I stopped using Photon in my main multiplayer game, Red Match 2, and I switched over to Steam Networking Messages, which is one of Steam's own networking solutions. Also, I've been super occupied with my junior year of high school, but it's the summer now, so I should be able to make a few more videos. As always, I want to thank my Patreon supporters, Silent Sputnik, Aladdin, I Like Frogs, Louie, Neil, Oakley, Richard, CKVFX, Coker, Dottie, Ghost Boy, Ian, Joshua, Nathaniel, Ninety, Shino, William, and XZippyZackX.
Thank you all so much.